Day two of Farnborough Connect has been all about the future for civil aviation and indeed the world as sessions throughout the day dug deep into the net zero ambitions for the aviation industry. How we get there was the challenging debate as well as looking at whether or not passengers will ever return, even when the airlines are ready. But after praising aerospace industry's passion for innovation, the UK's business minister, Paul Scully, shared his view of what's needed. By bringing together that innovation and the net zero ambitions, we can see the UK investing in the new technology, making the current forms of aircraft uh, greener as well. And that's going to be investment in new low and zero emission forms of propulsion, like hybrid electric and fully electric flight. And these are really exciting technologies, and that does promise what that low carbon future for UK and worldwide aviation might look like. So what are the prospects for technology? At Connect, chief technology officers from the leading OEMs all got together to discuss the realities of the innovation ambitions. Industry leaders from Airbus, GE, Boeing, Safran, Rolls-Royce and Raytheon Technologies outlined how their companies were reducing emissions. At the same time, the EU was announcing ambitious multilateral climate targets in Brussels. Eric Delvier of Safran said the industry leaders showed a strong alignment and consistency in their commitments towards net zero. The session heard that half of the world's major carriers had already committed to reaching the target by 2050. So decarbonizing the aviation is a significant goal for all of us around the table today. And we're all agreeing on that. We clearly have the right level of ambition. Now we need to accelerate and progress in the regulatory frameworks and the public policy support and as well in the technology pathways to secure the industrial ramp up and to ensure economic efficiency. Paul Stein of Rolls-Royce said the road to net zero was a long-term project and would require collaboration, not just from aviation, but other industries. There's huge scope for innovation here. And I think it's almost dangerous taking a 2021 outlook on the ramp up of sustainable fuels, because I'm convinced within the next 10 years, this massive industry, and don't forget, in aviation, we use pretty much the same chemical formula as required for agricultural diesel or home heating. So the amount of innovation that's going into this area is massive. And we in aviation uh, will be leaders, but also benefit from other industries using that. But in a session on future engineering and propulsion, there are still significant challenges for others outside of aviation to solve. This is Pratt & Whitney's Michael Winter. We have opportunities. So the challenges are to scale up the sustainable aviation fuel. The challenge is that there isn't any hydrogen available today, and that hydrogen that is available isn't, isn't made from green sources. Right, so there are other industries that will face these challenges to bring scale and to bring infrastructure so that we can uh, bring it forward in our industry. But the final panel of the day questioned whether decarbonization really is as hard as we think. Well, is it? We're tracking our emissions, we're showing our progress, we're setting short and long-term milestones. So it's not enough to just say we're gonna be net zero at, at 2050, but now we're saying, how are we gonna get there in the short term, whether that's through SAF at 2030. I think the level of transparency and commitment across the industry is what really encourages me that this time is different and that this will stick as a priority. And when it comes to recovery for the airlines, what's not so easy is getting governments to play their part. As former British Airways and IAG Chief Executive and now Director General of IATA, Willie Walsh, explains. If you were dealing with a health issue, you would have a harmonised approach. You know, the, the virus is the same no matter what country you're dealing with. What we're dealing with here is political issue. And that's why you're, you're getting a disjointed approach, because each government is assessing how their voters will respond to their actions. CEO and founder of the Anglo-Indian airline Flypop, Nino Singh Judge, argues that double vaccinated freedoms is the answer and shot down others who suggested that might be unfair. I think if you're double vaccinated, you know, you should be afforded more freedoms and encourages people to get vaccinated. I know there's a 
there's a huge amount of uh, uh, people in my diaspora who don't want the vaccination. Well, if you don't want the vac double vaccinations, then you're not going to be able to travel home. But overall, the future should rest in the industry's hands. And Willie Walsh is confident that will work. So if the risk increases, we add additional measures. If the risk reduces, we can reduce measures. So data-driven approach, absolutely critical. And I I'm confident that uh, in a year from now, it will look a, a lot more positive. Well, that was really a positive day's debate. If you missed any of yesterday's sessions, you can see them by clicking the Farnborough Connect On Demand sessions harbour. Today, the event is focusing on the future and particularly at diversity, education and digitalisation. It's well worth watching. Goodbye.